Electric sailboats, it's a big topic, no doubt, and Gone with the Wind's recent stray current issue, eating their brand new cat, really highlighted a lot of problems for us. Is it too soon for electric? What do the winds have to say? What does Yanmar, the key sailboat diesel manufacturer, have to say? Let's have a look. Gone with the Winds, one of the best known sailing YouTube channels, recently got a brand new cat from HH Catamarans with hybrid drives using diesel to make electricity and electric to drive the boat along and their experience hasn't exactly gone well. They recently did an episode on where we stand with electric sailboats that really highlighted a lot of problems and a recent interview with Crosby Lorimer Liz Tucker and Cole Brower, who just sailed Cole's boat, First Light, into Sydney, touched on how the racing organizers, in many cases, still require a diesel engine as a safety measure. Cole and Liz, or Za as she prefers, talked about how the Class 40 relies on hydrogen generators and solar, but how in most cases a diesel is still a requirement for safety. Another channel, Sailing Uma, switched to electric years ago and never looked back, but it hasn't been easy for them, often using their dinghy to push them along when the electric drive isn't adequate for their travel plans. The Winds interviewed manufacturers recently and highlighted a few key things going on in the industry right now. A company called ePropulsion has dedicated itself to making a standalone solution to electric sailboat motors and is doing things fairly well. They've developed an electric drive system that can be used for an outboard motor, an inboard motor, or a sail drive. No matter what you need it for, it's all the same system, which is kind of good. And the mounting plates they use are direct bolt-on replacement for all the major engines you might find in a sailboat today. Their i-series electric inboard model is a compact design that integrates five functional modules of motor, gearbox, motor controller, system controller unit, and a cooling system into a tiny spot. You yank the diesel from your boat and this drops right in as a direct replacement. This takes about 60% less space than the engine it replaces and typically weighs 65% less than a combustion engine. They also make a pod engine that replaces your sail drive and get this, nothing goes inside the hull. The pod bolts directly to the existing sail drive hole in the hull using a seal just like your old sail drive. But the motor and controller and everything, except the batteries of course, is in the sail drive leg itself. Nothing in the hull. And it's self-cooling because everything's underwater in the leg. E-Propulsion also makes their own batteries and throttles and displays, so you get every single piece of the drive system from one company, and they have dealers all over the world. The winds go on to point out how this is pretty amazing because right now, when you piece together an electric drive system from multiple companies, if something goes wrong, there's always this finger pointing game between those companies whenever something happens um, as to whose fault the problem actually is. With ePropulsion, it's one team, one technical support person, one company. Everything is made by them and designed specifically to work together. And don't think it's just tech startups getting into this mess. Yanmar, the legendary diesel of most sailboats, is here in this game too. They make a direct fit Yanmar sail drive leg that's all electric too. Their model does have some components inside the hull, but there's a magic to this. While this was developed for brand new boats, it's backward compatible. This is amazing, so let me explain. Yanmar bought a test boat, a Safier 33, which we did a review on specifically, so you can see that at the top, I'll leave a link. And on their Safier 33, they use it as a test bed for developing this electric drive system. The idea is that their new electric sail drive is exactly the same bolt pattern and restrictions and dimensions of any of their diesels that they manufacture. So if your boat uses a Yanmar, which is basically every boat today from Beneteau to Island Packet, they can now offer you the brand new boats with either the diesel or the electric. And which drive system is fitted is super easy for that boat builder. But also, Yanmar developed this with backward compatibility for us boat owners who might want to go electric at some point. And not just a few years, they did 40 years of backward compatibility. So if you have a 40 year old Yanmar, this electric job will fit right in there. That's impressive. 
Hey, while I have you as a side note, don't forget to head over to the website, practical-sailor.com to sign up there because there's all sorts of great boat reviews and product and gear stuff and stories from all different writers over there. I'll leave a link at the top for you. Now, a little bit of a side note, Yanmar choosing a Sapir 33 for their test boat might be considered a slightly loaded choice. And what I mean is the Sapir is purpose-built to be very light and very slippery. So their test results for range and efficiency in a 33-foot boat can't really be compared to any other 33-foot boat out there. Sapir uses a lot of carbon fiber and their hulls are extremely efficient. So the test results they get on this boat, maybe we should take them with a grain of salt. Yanmar's electric drive system is a little bit different than e-propulsions too. A big problem with electric motors people have experience with is overheating at full throttle. And while e-propulsion puts all their equipment in the leg using seawater to cool it, Yanmar went a little bit of a different route. They have an oil in the whole thing and an oil pump on the side of the unit that circulates the oil around the inside of the components, the components in the boat. And then the oil goes down the aluminum leg acting as a heat exchanger to get cool. And then it comes back up into the boat, into the module up there. They tested this in Caribbean waters and say, it'll go full throttle for up to one hour without overheating. So you probably wouldn't be going full throttle everywhere anyway with your electric drive because you'd run out of battery. So one hour is probably adequate. So while you can now get a brand new boat with either combustion or electric drive in just about any range of boat, is any of this worth it? Well, the winds say yes and no. Their outlook and the outlook directly from Yanmar is pretty much the same. If you're cruising and need to make 100 or even 200 nautical mile trips, electric is not the answer. The range is simply not practical. The amount of batteries you'd have to carry to be a reliable ocean cruiser is staggering. We aren't there yet. But if you're just a recreational sailor or coastal cruiser making no more than the typical 20 or 30 mile weekend, electric actually is a very good option. A typical sailboat is plugged into the dock 90% of the time, more than 90% of the time. And if that's the case, the batteries will always be full. You show up on Friday night or Saturday morning for a weekend and you enjoy the boat for a couple of days, motoring out of the harbor and raising the sails motoring back in when you're done. And the electric capacity is more than enough to do that. The boat sits all week plugged in, fully recharging those batteries for you when you show up the next weekend. You never have to do an oil change and maintenance is almost non-existent with this setup. You are gonna be changing batteries every five to 10 years. Yanmar themselves say what I think we're all thinking here. The current battery technology out right now, lithium and everything else, simply is not enough for the cruising sailboat today. As cruisers, we demand a reliability and a range from our propulsion system that we can really only find in the combustion engine. I do like this standalone sail drive idea though. I think it's super cool because I have a sail drive. I saw that and I was just picturing what the inside of my boat would look like with their system, the added space of my boat with no diesel and no sail drive gearbox at all. You lift the companionway stairs and it's just a flat surface under there. How cool would that be? While you're here, please don't forget to hit subscribe and give this video a thumbs up. I'll see you guys next time.